Okay, it's the turn of the UK, the Canadians, and the South Africans. Uh, the UK economy is split. Um, Pacific and Atlantic. Uh, so in the Pacific, in India, they're going to spend 17 IPCs on two um, uh, artillery pieces and three infantry. Uh, in the Europe, on the Europe side of the board, they have 17 IPCs to spend as well. They're going to buy a factory for 12 and a pillbox or bunker for um, four, so that's 16, and they're going to save one IPC for next turn. Uh, the Canadians will be purchasing a transport ship, and the South Africans will be purchasing a mechanized infantry. Uh, there are two attacks to be made in this um, round. The um, uh, one, two, three. Actually, yeah, let's do that then. Um, sorry, the um, uh, German submarine fleet in C Zone 110 will be attacked with um, a destroyer from C Zone 92, a destroyer from C Zone 109. A fighter and a, ta uh, and a strategic bomber from the UK and a fighter from Scotland. Uh, we'll be going into that mess there. Um, the only other attack is in the Mideast. Uh, and Iraq will be attacked in an amphibious assault. And how that's going to work is the transport ship from C-Zone 98 is going to go to C-Zone 81 and pick up the two infantry, or the infantry and the artillery from Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. Uh, and then proceed to C-Zone 80 and offload in Iraq. Uh, the infantry from Transjordan is going to go into the attack, and the mechanized infantry from Egypt is going to go into the attack as well. Uh, supporting this uh, from the Pacific side of the board, uh, an infantry and an artillery from India are going to jump onto a transport ship and move to C-Zone 80 and offload. This attack will be supported by a cruiser from C-Zone 39, which will have an offshore shot. So we only have uh, two battles to roll, so let's get right to them. Sorry, just one addition to the combat moves. The infantry from West India will walk into Eastern Persia, the Pro-Axis territory, and take it. Um, okay, that's it. All right, in the battle for um, Sea Zone 110, the four German submarines U-69, U-71, U-75, and U-83 are being attacked by two destroyers, the HMS Eclipse and the HMS Fury, two fighters, and one strategic bomber. So that's a four, two threes, and two twos. Two hits. So there are two submarines already out of commission. Uh, four ones. One hit. So one of the destroyers is killed. Uh, so we will obviously keep going. Try and clear the sea zone. And we do so. Both of the submarines are dead, but they do get to fire back. And they both miss. So there is a destroyer acting as a blocker in that sea zone right now. So the UK wins the battle. Okay, here's the amphibious assault on Iraq. Uh, the British are coming in, in terms of ground forces, the British are coming in with an infantry and a mechanized infantry. Uh, landing uh, in the HMS Stalker um, are an infantry and an artillery. Landing in the HMS Empire Spearhead are an infantry and an artillery. Uh, and that will be supported by an offshore shot from the HMS Argonaut cruiser. Uh, so the cruiser fires first and misses. Okay, so we have four twos and two ones. Three hits, so that's the battle. All done, but they do get to roll defense. 
and they miss with all three shots. So the British take the territory with no casualties whatsoever. Okay, non-combat, let's start with the Canadians. Um, the infantry and artillery in Ontario are going to move forward into Quebec. The infantry in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba is going to move to Ontario. Uh, the infantry and tank in Quebec are going to board the transport. And the transport is going to make its way along with the accompanying um, destroyer to Gibraltar. And see Zone 91 and offload there. The British will also be supporting Gibraltar with um, an infantry and an anti-aircraft artillery being loaded up um, in C-Zone um, 109 and uh, moving to C-Zone 91. Uh, all of the planes that participated in the C-Zone 110 attack will land in the United Kingdom. The two infantry from Scotland will move south into the United Kingdom. Uh, in the Mediterranean, the ships in uh, C-Zone 96, that's a cruiser and a submarine, will go into C-Zone 98. Um, and all the forces in Alexandria, with the exception of one infantry, will move into Egypt. Um, let's go around the board to the other side. It's probably better to look at it from this way. Uh, the South Africans will be moving all of their forces as well. They will be loading up an infantry and an artillery onto their transport ship, uh, and along with their destroyer, they will be making their way to Sea Zone 81 and offloading in Egypt. Um, the infantry from Southwest Africa will go to Rhodesia, the infantry from Rhodesia will go to the Belgian Congo, and the uh, mechanized infantry from South Africa will also go to the Belgian Congo. Um, in the Pacific Theater, the destroyer from Sea Zone 39 will go to Sea Zone 76, just off the uh, coast of the Horn of Africa. Uh, and all of the forces in uh, India will um, uh, move into uh, uh, Burma. Uh, the um, Battleship in C-Zone 37 will move to C-Zone 39. Uh, and one infantry from Malaya will move up into Shan State. And the infantry that was already in Shan State will move into Burma. I think that's it for movement. forgot to mention one last movement. Uh, the Canadians uh, in C-Zone 1, they're going to be loading up the infantry from British Columbia. And then the destroyer and the transport ship in C-Zone 1 will make their way to C-Zone 64, just on the other side of the Panama Canal. Okay, placement of new units. The new Canadian transport is going to go into C-Zone 106. The new South African mechanized infantry is going to go into the Union of South Africa. And the new factory and pillbox are going to go into Egypt. Uh, yes, in terms of the Pacific Theater, the three new infantry and the two new artillery are going to go into India. Okay, um, income. The income tracker only changes uh, for two territories, one of which isn't actually worth any money. Um, Eastern Persia is now British and Iraq is now British. Now Iraq gives the British an additional two IPCs. So we will adjust that. They go from 17 to 19. Oh, the French should have gone down 4 to 15, but they don't collect any money anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and then these guys should be at... They started at... Hang on one sec, sorry. The Dutch started at 14 and they lost so they're at 11, even though they don't collect anything. 
Uh, okay, so the income tracker should be correct on there. Okay, uh, so money for the uh, British um, Canadians and South Africans. Uh, the Pacific side of the board, the British collect 17. Nothing's changed there. Uh, the uh, Europe side of the board, they're going to collect 19. Uh, plus, they saved an IPC for last time, so they're going to collect 20 IPCs to start the next turn. And then the Canadians, once again, will have 7 IPCs, and the South Africans will have 4 IPCs. Uh, so that's the end of the round. Let's do some... Um, disposition of forces. In Canada, in Quebec, there's an infantry and an artillery. In Ontario, there's an infantry. In C-Zone 106, there's a transport. Down there in C-Zone 64, there is a destroyer and a transport loaded with one infantry. In C-Zone 91, there is a Canadian transport and a Canadian destroyer. And then in Gibraltar, there is a Canadian infantry and a Canadian tank. In C-Zone 91 for the Brits, there is a transport and a cruiser. And then in Gibraltar, there are an infantry unit and an anti-aircraft artillery unit. In the Home Islands in the UK, uh, there is a radar station, two uh, anti-aircraft artillery, one artillery, four infantry, two fighters and a tactical bomber, along with a French fighter and a French infantry as well. Um, in Malta, there's an infantry and uh, anti-aircraft artillery. In C-Zone 98, there is a carrier with one fighter on it. There are two cruisers and there's a submarine. Uh, in Alexandria, there's an infantry. In Egypt, there are three infantry. One artillery, one, anti uh, one um, mechanized infantry, uh, one new pillbox, and of course a new factory, uh, along with two South African units, an infantry and an artillery, and two Australian units, an infantry and a mechanized infantry. Uh, in C-Zone 81, there is a South African destroyer and a South African transport. In way down there. Let's have a look there. In the Belgian Congo, there's a South African infantry and mechanized infantry. In Rhodesia, there's a South African infantry. And in the Union of South Africa, there is a South African uh, mechanized infantry. In C-Zone 76, there is a destroyer. In C-Zone 80, there's a cruiser and two transports. In Iraq, there are three infantry, two artillery, and one mechanized infantry. In eastern Persia there is an infantry. In C zone 39 there is a battleship. In India proper, uh, the capital, there are three infantry and two artillery. In Burma there are two anti-aircraft, one mechanized infantry, five infantry, two fighters and one tactical bomber along with one Canadian infantry and one South African infantry. In Shan State there's a British infantry and an Australian infantry. In Malaya there is a British infantry or two British infantry and an Australian infantry. In Kwangtung there are two British infantry and one Canadian infantry. And in Borneo there is a British infantry and unless I've missed something I think that is all of the British Canadian and South African forces on the board okay um, Anzac Dutch and French are up uh, at the end of the round so that's gonna be the next turn